Hi guys, Calamity Stone here and welcome back to our episode of Minecraft Hardcore. So to start this episode off, I'm doing more building because <laughs> I kind of went through a building spree when doing the recording for these videos. And uh, at this point, I'm deciding to build an enchantment tower because I kind of had built a shack earlier for the enchanting setup and it was, it was atrocious. <laughs> kind of built like it just a cube and decided that was it and uh, I was like that's that's no I'm not happy with that so I start filling all this in I'm using easy place mode again because it makes it easier when I'm trying to get blocks that I can't reach without having to jump and such and it just puts the right blocks that I have in my inventory into pardon me the place where they belong there are points here where if there's something ahead or in front of said uh, block, I do have to sort of do this weird like crouching, placing sort of thing to see how it goes. So it does take me a bit, but I was quite happy with this. I will also put the person who built it in the description as per usual, because I always like to give credit to the people who do these designs that I borrow them from because God bless them. I have zero building skill in Minecraft and if it wasn't for their lovely tutorials, I'd probably have a very, very atrocious looking world. <laughs> I, at this point, have gone off to go do some exploring and I have found a dungeon and I just go through and I loot it and go through and carry on with everything that I need to do in here. I also grab all the gold and emerald because hey, why not? I grab the food and the coal because hey, I'm not gonna say no to coal. It's always a, a good thing to have extra of it. At this point, I'm kind of realizing I don't really have much room in my backpacks. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what I do need and what I don't need. I'm slowly making my way up to the top. Once I've made it to the top, I realize there's not really much else here to loot, so I go on my way. I ended up finding a jungle temple at the same time too. So I've disabled everything there and I quickly loot what I can and put away what I don't need. I then head back to the house. House. <laughs> To our area and finish off bits and pieces of the enchanting setup. Enchanting tower. I then go over to our little villager trading area that I made, check which villagers have what, and see which ones I want to potentially trade with. I decide I'm gonna grab a mending book because hey, mending is very helpful. At this point, I'm kind of deciding in my head what one do I want the mending on. And then go and see my uh, Fletcher villager and just give him a whole bunch of sticks so I can replenish my emeralds. I then go down to the skeleton farm after enchanting my axe with mending and decide to uh, level it back up because it's looking pretty damaged. I then decide at this point that I'm going to try and fill up this little area here to see if it makes the spawns a bit better. I couldn't actually tell you if it did or not because I don't actually remember. <laughs> I think it did, I'm not too sure. I 
that all filled in, I decide to go and find other areas that I could perhaps fill in just to make the mob spawning a tad bit more efficient. I've made my way back to the skeleton farm to see if any of the plugging of the cavernous areas has done anything. As I said before, I don't remember. I'm hoping it did, I just don't remember. I'm also going through the loot here to see which bows I might take to merge. And then go back up and decide I'm going to go into the greenhouse and harvest some of our crops and replant because why not? It's always good to have that extra amount of crop resources out and about. And then use the composter just to break down the extra seeds because I don't really keep them for much as I don't need them for a lot of things. So I just break them down. Then go harvest the pumpkins, melons and sugar cane. I then decide I'm going to make a, another area on top of the villager little trading block I have. Because at this point, I realized with the crops I'm getting, why not make a area to trade with farmer villages? I also realized at this point too, well, not, not at this exact moment, looking back on it, I realize it, uh, but I kind of put the block spacing a little bit too far forward with some of these. So yeah, whoops. I then go to the village that's nearby and I go and capture myself whatever unemployed villagers I could find. I see one over here walking and I quickly go to run and chase after him. I find another guy, grab him, and then go ahead and grab... Oh no, I've grabbed all of them at this point. <laughs> Grab them all and then I start setting up the area to put down the trapdoors so I can just drop them in. Put our composters down. Put some torches up here so that it's a bit safer as well because we don't really want anything too bad happening. I place the trapdoors in and then we go and put our little villager friends in here. And then see what trades they have. I bring back some of my crops and decide to trade with the ones that I want to lock in. I 
At this point, I decided I was going to slightly start on a terraforming project. Uh, I do have to apologize. I'm not very good at terraforming. I was actually quite happy with what I had done because I didn't think I'd be able to, t to get this done and have it look somewhat decent. So I am happy with that. But I ended up building a land bridge across a certain area and filling it in so that it was more compact. And then now I'm trying to sort of build like waterways and channels and such. I went over to the sand village, which was right next door to a mangrove swamp. I'm looking for mud at this point in time because I'm wanting to combine mud with a couple of other blocks to make a realistic looking waterbed. I then decide I'm also going to want some clay. So I look for some clay deposits because that would be handy. Because I think I've already depleted the clay reserves I have near the house. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's why I decided to do it here. And so my current block palette for the stony wall sort of area is a tough andesite and cobblestone selection, I believe. I'm trying to clear out these halves to make them look more like structured cliffs, I suppose. <laughs> Thank God for my enchanted pickaxe at this point because it does make things a bit, it, well, it did make things a bit easier. Here I am just laying the foundations of how I want it to go. And I'm trying not to make it look so uniform, I'm trying to make it look natural. <laughs> Which coming from somebody who doesn't uh, normally do terraforming and such, it it was quite difficult to try and figure out what looked natural and what didn't. There'll be several points in this where you'll see that I will go take a step back, have a look, see if I'm happy with what I'm doing or if I'm not. And then decide I'm going to clear out the other side a bit more just to make it look so, make it look more, as I said earlier, natural. Now I only get to a certain point with like this uh, cliff design before I kind of just leave it to go do some other things because my patience with this waned thin very quickly. I think I spent like four hours on it maybe before I decided I'm done. I'm gonna go find something else to do. I have to give credit to all those Minecraft YouTubers who can sit there for hours and hours on end terraforming and making things look pleasant because I can tell you that is not me. <laughs> 
At this point, I'm filling in the holes so that I can build up the walls without them looking dodgy and having those large gaps. Because the last thing I want to do is start building the wall up, have the large gaps, and then have to go back in and fill them later. At this point, I look at the cliff and decide how am I going to get this river to run through. So I look at where I have my little area there and I start breaking down the little border area and clearing it out. At this point, I've run out of a shovel, but I just decided I'm going to just break it with my hand until I go get a new one. I then decide I'm going to fill up the wall a bit more so it just looks more uniform. And fill in whatever bits I need to fill in with the extra dirt that I have. Now I decide to go down and fill up that large hole that I couldn't have been bothered to deal with earlier, which did come back to bite me in the butt. <laughs> I then realize that because I've made most of this uh, dirt mound hollow, that here comes the fun part of having to fill in everything so that I can make it look like a river. I then have a look at the different types of uh, designs I can do with dirt in the botanist workbench because I don't really want to just use normal dirt for the riverbed. It looks kind of odd. So, yeah. Now, I don't believe I make this river too deep because I was getting quite frustrated with having to fill in uh, all the blocks. So I kind of just left it as is. And at this point, I start placing my clay. Then I realized I've run out of clay because I don't have a lot and kind of just sort of figure out what I'm doing from there. At certain points during this process, I get very frustrated because it gets dark and I'm trying to sleep and it's not time to sleep yet. keep placing my sanded tuff and then halfway through this process I kind of realized that I don't like that it's all just sanded tuff on one layer so I try to blend it in we then head down to my mines and decide I'm going to fix up, uh, fix up the railway track that I have in hopes that I can get up and down there a lot quicker than what I had been doing.
I also head down one of the stripped mine areas so I can grab some more tough because I realized I was running out of tough. I go back into filling everything in and I also have decided that I found uh, this sanded dirt sort of look from the botanist workbench and I decided that, that looks better for more of a rocky, sandy, dirty sort of side of the river. I then start filling in the very bottom of it. Not realizing that uh, my torch to moths method, torch and moths method, doesn't work when you place water in. I soon figure this out and then realize I have to go find another way to keep it lit up. It's at this point that I realize that yeah, that's that's not gonna work. So I just put glowstone in there. and hope that it doesn't look too noticeable. <laughs> and then I become very stickler at this point for making sure I fill it in exactly how I want it filled in. I haven't filled in all the areas of the clay just yet as I believe I do end up placing more down because I go and get some more. I go and fill in the rest of the hole that I hadn't filled in earlier. I then go back to filling in where I need to with water. I didn't fill the water up completely because what I wanted to do was wait till I had the cliffs done and then have it cascade down the sides. At this point, after using some of my tools up pretty extensively, I go back down to my skeleton farm. I also find that there's this trinket called the quiver that I can use, so I put all my arrows in there. <laughs> We're closing to the end of the episode now, so I hope you guys enjoyed that hardcore uh, episode. There is a still a couple more in the works, but I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!